everyone, I am Dr. Paul Moffat. I teach online courses at my school, Clockworks Academy. I'm teaching three courses right now on King Arthur, and for one of those courses, I made some family trees of Arthurian characters, and I thought that those might be interesting even to people who aren't taking the courses. So I decided to make them available for everyone, and that's what this is. This is King Pelinor's family tree. This is not an exhaustive family tree. We could go into more detail than this, but this is just a picture of who King Pelinor is and what his family tree is. King Pelinor is king of the Isles. It's not clear where exactly that is. There's a few different theories. It's not really important. Pelinor has several children. He has a son, Tor. That is his son who was raised by Ares the cowherd, and later in Tor's career he calls himself the son of Ares. Tor's brother is Lamarack. Lamarack is a very good knight. He Mallory usually lists Lamarack along with Lancelot and Tristram as one of the three greatest knights in the world. Lamarack's brother is Percival. Percival is one of the three Grail Knights, along with Bors and Galahad. So he is important in the Grail quest. Another of Pelinor's sons is Sir Aglavale, who does not make much of an impression in Mallory. He exists, but there's not much about him. Pelinor has at least two daughters. One of them is Elaine. Elaine is the daughter that Pelinor passes by not knowing that she's his daughter while she is calling for help. And he has another daughter, presumably. Uh, there is a maiden in the Grail quest who is Percival's sister. And since Percival is Pelinor's son, I am assuming that the Grail maiden is Pelinor's daughter, although she may be Percival's sister on the other side. That's not very likely since Pelinor has a lot of children that he doesn't seem to know about. The Grail Maiden doesn't have a name, especially in Mallory. There are names associated with her, and it's debated whether any of them are actually the same person. But in Mallory, at least, these are Pelinor's six children. Uh, there may be others. The other thing to really know about Pelinor and his family tree is that Pelinor's brother is King Pelles, the maimed king or the fisher king. King Pelles is the father of Elaine, Lady of Corbinek, who marries Lancelot, and they have their son Galahad, who is one of the other Grail Knights. The last thing to include in Pelinor's family tree is the questing beast, who is not related by blood to Pelinor, but Pelinor says that the questing beast is a quest that his bloodline is destined to achieve. The questing beast, by the way, is a chimera, a mix of animals with the head and neck of a snake, the feet of a heart or deer, and haunches of a lion, and the body of a leopard. Uh, that sounds to a lot of people like a description of a giraffe. So it, it's a vicious giraffe. I'm, I'm going off of family trees for a moment to say it is called the questing beast in English. The beast glatissant in French. Uh, questing is the sound. It makes always the sound of 30 couple hounds in its belly except while it is drinking. And glatissant or is... Glatissant and questing are both words for the sound that hounds make when they are hunting. Uh, so technically, the questing beast just means baying beast. But of course, in English, questing beast uh, is a pun, because it's also the beast that is quested after. So it both is on a quest of its own, and it is also the subject of a quest. In French, there's only the one meaning, so... In the back half of Mallory, Sir Palamedes follows the questing beast. So this raises the possibility that either either Pelinor is wrong about his bloodline being the one that con that will achieve the questing beast and is always destined to chase the questing beast, or there's a possibility that Palamedes is connected to Pelinor's line somehow, although we never get any clarity on that. There's no 
indication of how or where he might be connected. The last kind of thing to know about Pelinor and these three family trees is Pelinor and his family have an ongoing feud with Gwain and his family, and Pelinor and his family are connected by way of Elaine with Lancelot and his family. So these three lines, these three family trees all intersect with each other, either through uh, marriage or through feud, but they're all intertwined and connected to each other. So here's the whole family tree. If you'd like to learn more about King Arthur or just talk about King Arthur more, you can take my courses. The first is called King Arthur, A Fine Romance, and it's focused on romance, the Lancelot and Guinevere story, among other romances. The second is called Fight for Right, and it's focused on war, tournaments, battles, kingship, nationalism, all that kind of thing in King Arthur. And the third is the Quest for the Holy, and it's all about the Holy Grail. You can find all those courses at clockworksacademy.com, as well as many other courses that we offer there on monsters, on medieval things, on all kinds of fun stuff. As I alluded to in this video, there I have two other family trees you can find here on my YouTube channel, one about King Arthur's family tree and one about Lancelot's family tree. I hope you have enjoyed this. I have really enjoyed making it. Goodbye for now. <laughs>